a city on a hill surrender to your will your glory on display your glory on display awesome in this place jesus you are awesome in this place worthy to be praised jesus you are worthy to be praised you will be praised come on that's it You will be praised. Your love, a force of grace, consuming every space. It's uncontainable. You're coming like a flood. Our hearts are filling up. All things are possible. Come on, let's sing that last part. All things are possible. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy, worthy to be praised, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be praised. Oh yes, you will, God. Your news goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Your grace goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing awesome in this place. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy, Lord. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. You will be fine. Come on, if he's worthy tonight, I dare you to lift your voice as we sing this next part. Your love goes on. Your, your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. Your praise goes on and on forevermore. We lift the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come is what we're living for. We lift the name of Jesus. We lift the name of Jesus. We lift the name of Jesus. No other greater name than I know, amen, than the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but pastor has been preaching wonderful words, mighty words, powerful words. And the one that I've just been laying in is faith does not consider, amen. We serve a mighty God. And if his word said it, then we can have it. If his word said it, we can obtain it, amen. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter what the situation looks like, our God is going to come through on our behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, 
I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in the midst. I worship you. Come on, lift it up tonight. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle work. Come is keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, remind yourself. Hey, we make a miracle work. Come is keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning. Around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, reach up and grab it by faith, cause he's a miracle work. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hey, you're a way maker. Hey, promise me, my God, that is who you are. You're a way maker, miracle worker. Come and see the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're a way maker, miracle work. Come and see the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You wipe away the tears, you mend the broken heart. Answer to it all, Jesus. He wipes away the tears, He can mend your broken heart. He's the answer to it all, Jesus. Way back, miracle work, promise keep. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. You're a way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, tell them, you're a way make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the dark night, my God, that is who you are. You're a way make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the dark night, my God, that is who you are. 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 Hey, you need to remember this. Even when you don't see it, he's working. Even when you don't feel it, he's working. He never stops, he never stops working. He never stops, he never stops working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never 
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Way make miracle work, promise keep Lord in the dark night. That is who you are. Come on, he wants your worship. He's the way miracle work, promise keep Lord in the dark night. My God, that is who you are. Your way make miracle work, promise keep light in the dark night. My God, that is who you are. Your way make miracle work, promise keep light in the dark night. That is who you are. That is who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Yeah. Even when I don't see you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. Thank you, Jesus. You never stop, you never stop working. Thank you, Jesus. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you working. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. You're a way maker, miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. Hallelujah. My Thank God. You. Thank you, Lord. Who you are. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory Hallelujah. to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just thank you. We just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to our heart, transforming our mind, transforming our life. Thank you, Father, that today, we give you the praise and the glory and all the honor. We thank you, Father, in advance for what you're doing. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit of God. We thank you for the power of God. And we thank you for the anointing making a way even where there maybe seems to be no way. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we, we open our hearts and we open our eyes to hear and see and understand your authority like never before. May we be transformed by the power in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're glad you're here at Relevant. Get out of your seat. Go say hey to somebody. We're happy you're watching online. Glory to God. We're glad you're in the house. Amen. It's going to be a great time at Relevant. Welcome to Relevant Church. We're so glad that you are joining us today. And as you hug a few more people and find your way back to your seat, I have a question. Are you new here? Because if you are, we'd love to connect with you. Because here at Relevant Church, you can find your place, reveal your purpose, and unlock your potential. And I have an easy assignment for you. It's simple, I promise. It's as easy as one, two, three. 
first, you're gonna find this orange card in your seat back pocket. It says welcome home on the front and connect card on the back. And secondly, if you'll fill that out for me neatly and completely. And then thirdly, if you take it to the back, where it says welcome home, if you'll take that back there, our connection crew is waiting to meet you and to greet you. And guess what else? They're gonna give you a free gift. So make sure you go back there, meet them. We'd love to connect with you. We're so glad you decided to worship with us today. We know you're gonna have a great, great time. We look forward to seeing you again soon. As always, welcome home. Well, good evening, Relevant Church. How are you doing this evening? Oh, come on. I know it's a Wednesday night, but you can do better. How are you doing this evening? There we go. I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, we're so glad that you're here with us tonight. And if you are a first time guest with us, make sure you do what the video said and fill out that card, the Get Connected card and take it to the Welcome Center. You do not want to miss your free gift. Amen. That's a blessing. Also, we want to take a moment and say hello to everyone that's joining us via the internet on our live stream. We welcome you tonight, and we know that God's going to do amazing things just where you are. So we have just a couple announcements for you tonight. So we talked about it on Sunday morning if you were here, but this coming Sunday, we're going to be having a very special time of celebration to celebrate and honor the man and woman of God of our house, Pastor Chris and Pastor Liz, for all of the wonderful things that they do for us. Yes, give them a hand clap. So we're going to be taking up a special offering on Sunday morning. So if you want to go ahead and prepare that ahead of time and bring it in, if you want to get a gift, a card, anything like that, we're going to be having a special time of celebration. And I was told Sunday that there will be cupcakes. So you definitely don't want to miss our 9 and 1030 services and a chance to honor them. And then finally, to round out the month of October, we're going to be having our second annual trunk or treat. Whoop, whoop. So we're going to be having that next door in the Champions Academy parking lot so we can just bless the community and give a faith-friendly alternative to what normally happens on the night of Halloween. So it's open for all ages to be able to come and receive some candy. They'll get to hear the gospel in a nice, safe environment. So if you are ready to do a trunk, make sure that you have turned in your theme and you get with the proper people so they can give you a everything that you need. Um, if you would like to volunteer your services and help, we still need your help. But most of all, we need your candy. Yeah, we can't have a trunk or treat without candy, right? So we have a basket in the foyer available for you to donate your candy as well. Amen. And we debuted the wonderful video on Sunday morning. So we're going to take a moment and share it with you again on Wednesday night. So make sure you turn your attention to the screen. And as always, welcome home. Well, praise the Lord. They're going to play a video. Watch this. <laughs> wow. Kids will be ready for that, amen? Are you guys ready for it? All right, now. I'm bring some candy, amen? <laughs> These kids are going to be having a blast. Glory to God. Amen? We're happy that we get to do that for them guys, amen? We've been on a good series, huh? How I many have been getting your life changed? Man, Sunday, Sunday's going to be, man, I was, getting, I was prepping for Sunday, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I was prepping and getting ready. I was like, man, this stuff is so good. Life-changing, amen? It's important kingdom principles of God, heaven and what God wants you to do and understanding authority. we got some great stuff tonight, and um, I'm just carrying along the theme because I want you to grow and what you need to grow in. And sometimes as God's maturing process takes place in your life, it really transforms you. And I'm going to tell you what, we're going to get in it, but you don't, hear it, you don't hear it that much in church, and you need to hear it. Because we're responsible whether you know it or not. It's very important. Amen? 
Well, praise the Lord. How many are excited about sowing some seed? Let's look at this right here. Go to Luke chapter 12, verse 42. I want you to learn something. The first step towards becoming responsible with your finances is to get the mindset that money does not belong to you. Okay, that's one of the first things you got to really learn. Text to give is up there. You want to pop that back up there? That was my bad. Sometimes people don't know where that's at, and it goes on the thing. It's relevantfl.org giving, or the text to give is right up there to 386-968-1103. I want you to understand stewardship. Amen? And you see that in Luke 12, 42, and the Lord said, who then is faithful and wise steward? Who is a faithful and wise steward? What's he say about him? He says, whom his Lord shall make ruler over the household to give them their portion of meat in due season. It says, blessed is the servant, verse 43. Blessed is the servant who what? whom his Lord, when he comes, finds him doing. Amen? Stewardship is key. One of the most important things is this, that you understand that wealth, wealth, wealth has been given to you to steward. Okay? You either have an owner mentality or a steward's mentality. Okay? If you grasp ownership in it, what happens is you, you think it's yours, okay? And one thing about something, it's easier to give away other people's stuff. Does that make sense? So as you know, you're just stewarding what God gave you, and the better you get at stewarding what God has given you, the more he'll give you. You got to get something now. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven operates different than the earth. The earth says, well, you don't have nothing, let's give you something. The kingdom says, you don't have nothing, there might be a reason why. And then it looks to them that are using and doing and says, well, I'll give you more. Now, that sounds like weird, but it's the truth because it's a kingdom principle. Does that make sense? It's important that you get this. Now, we're not saying don't be, don't be benevolent, and we're not saying don't be helpful. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, though, these principles will prosper you if you work them. Just, you know, a lot of times people have a heart of compassion for people that, that are hurting. I understand that. We do. We, we got an outreach every week. But poverty and shame shall come to him that doesn't follow instruction. You can't get around the word. Did you hear what I said? Poverty and shame will come to him that does not follow instruction. That's a promise. So maybe sometimes people ain't looking for instruction that should be looking for instruction. Because you ain't just going to get where some people are. Let me tell you something, guys. I, I say this with a, with, a, with, a, with a gentle heart, really gentle. But please hear me. There is a reason why some people are in the position they're in. That's just the God's honest truth. So you got to choose. You gotta, this is where we're talking about submission and authority all month. This is where you got to submit into God's prosperity. You see what I'm saying? You got to sooner or later say, this is the God thing. Now, I'm not saying you guys. You guys are probably doing that already. But poverty and shame will come to him to who? Doesn't follow instruction. People should be looking for instruction. Instead, most of the time, they're not looking for instruction. You see what I'm saying? So we understand you can help people, but some people just ain't going to be helped. But you're, gonna, you're looking for help. Amen? So what do I got to learn? I got to learn, number one, this is one of the most important things I can learn. Instead of clinging to what I have, I need to think this. I'm a story what God has entrusted me with. Man, that is so good. That everything you have, God gave you to see if he can trust you with more. God has blessed you with talents, abilities. God has blessed you with your job. God has blessed you and put you in a prosperous place to even live. God's done a lot of great stuff with you, but I got news for you. God's into blessing you, but here's the thing. Guess what? It's, it's not up to me to run my finances the way I want. I got to learn I'm a steward. You see that? And I'll tell you guys, if I said like this, everybody on this side of the room, money and purses, give it to the people on that side of the room, and swip swap, and you can get the harvest on whatever you give. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give, look, I'm gonna give all Ron's money. Why am I gonna do that? Because I'm gonna get the harvest on taking his wallet and sowing that seed. Yeah, that's just what I said. You understand that? If you give me your wallet and I said, take all that money out of there, and I put it in the bucket, and then I get the return on what I sow, if it's your money, I'm gonna give you the whole wallet. Here's your empty wallet back. I want the harvest. You see it? But if I think it's mine, what do I do? I hold on. Now I'm stewarding it. God gave it to you. Everything you got in your pocket, God gave you. Now can he trust you with more? See what I'm saying? So when you get a steward mentality, you're kingdom people. What do I, God, what do you need? See it? Don't get an ownership. Get a stewardship. Write that down. 
Don't get ownership mentality, get stewardship. For you guys that take notes, I'm a steward of what God gave me. And if you get good at using it, woo, he'll give you more. Oh, he'll give you more and more and more. But you got to be faithful. Amen? You just be faithful with the. Here's what he said. He said, let me see somebody coming to the earth and just do, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Go over to God. See what I'm saying? Some people say, well, I don't, I don't, you know, and most people that are stubborn, they don't see the blessings of God. Yeah, you're gonna stay, you're gonna stay struggling because you think, see, here's what people don't get. Can I give you a miracle? Can I give you a miracle nugget here? You gonna pay attention to this? Because I don't care who's in this room. You know what I'm saying? Remember that? There'll be eight people in here. I ain't down, I don't care about that. I'll give you me, I'll give you meat, but you gotta pull, but you gotta be able to take it. The willing and obedient ain't the good of land. Some people are willing, but they ain't obedient or they ain't willing. They get it backwards. Well, I'll do what God tells me to do. Well, then let me. No, no, they ain't submitting right. They ain't doing something right. If you ain't prospering, you ain't. Look at me. If you ain't prospering, you ain't doing something right. Well, we've been doing this for a decade. Yeah, no, duh. You ain't been paying attention for a decade neither. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good stuff right there. Man, people don't want to hear it. Broke people don't want to hear none of that stuff. Well, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. You think you do. It's pride. You know what you're doing. You understand what I'm saying? This is for the three people in here that don't want to pay attention to me. Okay? I'm telling you, it's the truth. And then they go, well, why is it happening? Because you got to be willing and obedient. And if you, you'll prosper. God wants to prosper you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Are you excited about that? I'm pumped about it. Why? Because I'm looking for instruction. I'm a man looking for guidance. I'm a man looking for instruction. So, so I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. I had a business guy. Bring the buckets. I, please, I had a business guy the other day said, I don't know this. I said, praise be to God. I know the God that knows it. You don't need, I'm serious. I said, I don't know something. I need to have, I said, I got the God that can do that. So you don't need to know it. You just need to know the people that know it. Oh, you better get that. The only difference between you and the people you want to be is they know something you don't know. And I said the other day, I said, I said, no, I got a guy that can do all that. You don't need to know it. See, that's the problem. When you think you need to know it, sometimes you feel, feel limited. I don't have the resources. I got news for you. Sometimes you just got to know the guy that knows a guy. And if you submit to one, you'll find the other. Oh, you better see that. You see that? I had a preacher one time. The guy was going belly up. Oh, the, the recession hit. Had a whole bunch of money. Didn't know how to get out. California guy was a big mess. Guy spent almost a year and a half sweating and suffering and toiling and trying to figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't get around it. And he went to another preacher buddy of his and he said, I am in a jam, man. I've been fighting this for a year and a half. He goes, oh, I know the guy. He goes, what do you mean you know a guy? I know a guy got a church out of the same mess you're in. Boom, one phone call. Year and a half of drama over. See, I'm telling you, man, this is what happens with this thing. You got to stay but ain't, I ain't listening to nobody. Okay, knock yourself out. Blaze your own chair. You're a real pioneer. No, I'm telling you. That's why you got to find where you need to connect. It's important for you, especially in your finances. Glory to God, right? You know what you're doing. That's just in the atmosphere now. Most of you guys are doing it. You know what I mean? The people that stood home, they, they didn't, they're, they're, they're a little ornery. Praise the Lord. Hold your seat in your hand. Say this out loud. Say, Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to sow. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for the opportunity to plant. Thank you for increase. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Amen, praise the Lord. Glory to God. The uh, ushers are going to come and serve you. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this. Tonight's going to be good. Go with me to Romans 5.17. We've been talking about authority. Amen. Romans 5.17. Very, very important. Amen. Romans 5.17. Praise the Lord. And I want you guys to just, I'm telling you, this whole month, um, some of the stuff I'm going to tell you, um, now, you're going to have to, you're going to have to kind of trust me in this thing because, um, you know, I know you trust me, but you're really going to have to trust me because I'm going to, I'm going to slip out, in the re- I'm going to slip out in deep water the next two weeks, this one and the next one. And the people ain't going to like it, but they need to grow, they'll get it. You know what I mean? And I don't say that mean way. Like, they think, well, you know, no, the church needs to be teaching people how to respond. And people just respond the way they want to respond, and they, got, they have an unbiblical example of it sometimes through leadership. Because you got leaders talking out their face to just be quiet because they're teaching people wrong, wrong, wrong ways of communicating. And that's the God's honest truth. You're never to rise up against authority. Never. Never. Remember this. 
any correction up is always rebellion. Correction from beneath up is always rebellion. There's no way around it. It's not meant to be. That's why. But you always I understand private. Now you say, well, things can go rogue. Well, it ain't your place to worry about what goes rogue. You understand? It's really not. Because you're going to get yourself in trouble. They got in trouble talking about Moses. Leave it alone. God will handle that stuff. God will raise one up, put one down. That's on God. I don't want to be God. I don't want to be God for a second. Let God be God. You know what I'm saying? But here's the name. Well, how do you keep things safe? Well, you keep things safe being led to the Lord. But I got news for you. Guess what? Don't go putting your mouth on stuff you don't need to put your mouth on because it's dangerous for you. Is that okay? Be careful with that. Because I'm telling you, the church don't talk like this. And we should talk like this to people. All authority, Romans 13, 1, don't go there. But Romans 13, 1, say, all authority came from God. Whether you like it or lump it, get over it. Well, you might, my boss is demon-possessed. He probably is. Well, you want, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's probably there. Well, how are we going to know? You know, the Bible talks a little bit about suffering. Not pain, but suffering for doing good. You know what I'm saying? Well, you think every season of your life is going to be comfortable? No way, guys. No way, guys. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Let's use our faith and get a better job, but let's not, let's not touch what we don't need to touch. You know what I'm saying? And you've got to be careful with this stuff because we don't tell you this stuff. What will happen is everybody's like raising up in mutiny over stuff that, no, you've got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, t- I'm just telling you, you do what you want with it. I'm not trying to freak you out or scare you, but certain things you just don't need to push against because it ain't worth it for you. Glory to God. Now look at Romans 5, 17. Everybody loves this one. For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one, much more they which received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen? And I told you with the Weymouth, Weymouth's translation, it says this. Moffat translated a little different, but Weymouth, for if, by, for if by the trespass of one, death reigned as a king through the one, much more they shall receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign as kings in the realm of life. Did you get that? Weymouth's translation, shall reign as kings in the realm of life. Amen? Okay, so here's the thing, right? In Romans 5, 17, now listen now. This is what you got to see. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ, then you are to reign as a king in the earth. Okay? Did you get that? Now here's the thing. Everybody say, well, how come I don't see people reigning like a king? Well, you got to go slow now. One is, we have to understand, do we have a revelation of reigning like a king? Two is, the only way you're going to get into position is you got to submit yourself first. Submission unto God and his word and the rule and reign of the kingdom. See what I'm saying? And we're going to talk about it. There's kingdom principles. Remember, I like talking about this. There's the person of Jesus. Everybody loves the person of Jesus because the person of Jesus loves everybody. The, the earth just wants to serve. It's going to sound bad, but it's true. The earth just wants to serve the person of Jesus. They don't want to know nothing about the principles of Jesus. Most of them. Does that make sense? Because the principles are where the rubber meets the road. What do you got to say about this? It's wrong. Here we go. Now I'm hating people. I don't hate nobody. I hate the devil. And if you side in with the devil, well, then so be it. Well, you ain't hating people. You understand what I mean? That's what they say. You're not open-minded. I don't, I don't plan on being open-minded. There ain't no reason to be open-minded. Uh, there ain't no, there ain't, no, I'm not mad. I'm not going to cause an argument. What do I got to, I don't have to be open-minded to that, nothing. The Bible's the Bible. That's it. Now, you might not agree with me. We could agree to disagree, and we can go to lunch together, but God, guess what? Now, I'm not changing what I think. You see what I'm saying? So now, right away, talk about the principles of Jesus. They don't want to hear about no principles of Jesus. They just want to know about the person. Jesus is love. Yeah, he's love, but he's got rules. You want to know what? This is funny. God loves everybody, but guess what? Love has rules. Are you down with this? He said, you love me, you obey me. How do you get around that one? Are you, you seeing it? He said, if you, I don't know what everybody's talking about, but I'm talking about the word of God. Did he not say, if you love me, obey me? He didn't say, I don't love you. He said, I love the world, for God so loved the he gave his only begotten son. He's loving everybody in the world. But guess what? Not everybody in the world can get close to him or fellowship with him. Now, I know that's our job. We got to show him Jesus. You got to preach the gospel. And then get him saved. And then we bring him in. And don't bring him in that wacko gospel. 
Just come as you are, stay as you are, be as you are, walk as you are, think as you are. No, 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 no. Somebody needs to start teaching people the truth the minute they get in. And tell them, this is, well, you know, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. Well, you know, well, no, you, if you're not changing, I don't know how saved you really are. Oh, I'm going to meddle. I'm not meddling. I'm just telling you, look, if my character's not changing a little bit, and then here's the best one. Here's the best one, right? Well, you know, uh, you know, well, you know, uh, you know I'm just going to keep my life. No, 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 no. He didn't tell me to be like you. God never told me to be like you. Don't be pulling this business like, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just telling you guys, and I know you guys ain't doing this, but don't be like, oh, I'm kind of supposed to be like Brother Bob. No, God told me to be like Jesus. So the, G, the Jesus example is the standard of life I should try to achieve. So what's that mean? I mean, I got work every day. Not that I'm not accepted, but I'm growing in the grace. I'm growing in the, you see what I'm saying? So when you start looking at that, what's that start telling me? Man alive, praise be to God. I got to get what? I got to get growing. Yeah, my love walk compared to your love walk might look better than yours, but guess what? He didn't tell me be like you. He told me be like him. Jesus hung on the cross. It doesn't get better than that. Giving up for love. You see what I'm saying? So you're always constantly growing. You're always constantly maturing. You're always constantly what? See, so here's the thing. This verse goes on to say, if you made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, you received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, then guess what? You've been made to reign as a king in the earth now. So now the first question is, have you received it? Do you even know? What do you mean I'm supposed to reign like a king? You are. Now here's the thing. Well, you're, he gave you a kingdom we're going to talk about. It. He set up a kingdom. When he set up a kingdom, guess what? He is the king of kings. Well, where are the kings at? You the kings. What are you for? His kingdom. That's God's rule and reign, authority in the earth. Now everybody wants authority, but you don't get authority until you submit it to power. Now, here's why. You ready for this? Jesus was deity and royalty, but he laid it down. Put on humanity so that he can what? So that he can position himself in the place of man. So man can take the royalty and the deity and the supernatural life that Jesus laid down. We could pick it up. But I got news for you. If he had to lay down deity the supernaturalness of God in the earth, and he had to lay down his life, guess what you got to do to get yours? You got to lay it down. Now, I know right away, here we go. Well, I've been to church for a while. Yeah, well, everybody been to church for a while, and I know what you're going to tell me. Well, sometimes things get off the rail. Well, no doubt, they're going to get off the rail. But the bottom line is you need to qualify where you connect. Are you here? Because I ain't going to listen. You, 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 ain't, you don't have the fear of the Lord. You're probably dangerous. You know what I'm saying? So qualify it, but when you find it, you better get all in. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I told him Sunday, man, if you ain't, if you ain't feel safe, you're in the wrong place. Does that make sense? Because this, but this is where you get the power. This is where you rule like a king. See, that Roman centurion had to figure it out, guys. You know what he said? He said, uh, he said what? He said, I'm a man under authority. Man, you want to know what? Check this out. You don't like this. Authority, think of what I just said. I'm a man under authority. A man or woman under authority hears at a different level than other people hear. Did you get that? Write that down. You got to pull that in your spirit. Hey, here, to hear. You can, why? You want to know why? Frequency is big in the kingdom because God's not giving further instruction to people that don't even listen. See what I'm saying? So that Roman centurion, he didn't even understand this whole thing. Man, this is real good. It makes up the difference for what you don't understand. The Roman centurion didn't even know what Jesus was talking about, really. He's like, I don't know. I got a servant sick. I heard you can heal him. Can you do it? He said, yeah, I'll do it. He said, okay, good. Let's go. He said, you ain't got to come to my house. He said, no, don't even worry about it. He said, just speak the word. I understand authority. I don't understand you. He didn't even know it was the will of God to heal this guy. He had a question. He had a, don't get me wrong, you ain't asking somebody to do something you don't think can do something. He had to know that he could fix them, but guess what? He said, I don't know. Maybe he'll do it. Let's ask. Will you come and do my serving? He's sick. I don't know what he got. He said, yeah, I'll come to your house. He said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I just need to know you wanted to. I know you can. Now I know you're willing to do it. Just speak the word. How do you know just speak the word? I'm a man under authority. What do you know about authority? I know that when I tell somebody, when I tell somebody, go, they go. Mm. 
I tell them, come, they come. What did he figure out? He figured out Jesus was a man of authority. Carried it. You could feel it. He would say, he said, just speak the word only. How do you know about speak the word only? Did he, listen, guys, you're getting this. You're seeing this, right? Did he have a real, and you know what he had? Humility. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. That was not humbleness and, a, and, and a, like a loathing, kind of like, you know, like, a, like I'm not worthy, like this false humility weirdo thing. Like, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. No, it was a man that said this, I am not worthy. I am humbled by your want to come, and I am submitted unto you, man, sir. But now whatever you speak, I know you can do. He had humility. See, humility, posture is key, and humility is king there. Because once you submit, you lift up yourself with power. Because whatever you, you ready for this? What, this is crazy good. Whatever you submit yourself to, you become able to step into the authority or the position of who you have submitted yourself unto. Do you understand that? Whoever you submit yourself to, at the level you submit unto, you step into the position and power that they have. You become one with it. You got it? Yeah, that's why you can get, that's why you connect it. You understand that? So you go and say, okay, it's like what I told you, right? If you come in and say, I'm going to figure it out, man, you want to be part of the government? Go ahead. Once you get in and under, you got the power backing you up of them. This kingdom stuff is like this. Now, here's the thing. Let me explain something. Rebellious people don't like this stuff. Man, Sunday's good. I'm telling you what, Sunday, you better get ready. But it's good. We're, we're not waiting for Sunday. We're getting it today. But I got more because I got to go in steps. They ain't even going to understand some of them on Sunday because you come, you come today and get it. Here's the thing, right? People don't realize they, there is this pseudo-rebellion. Well, why I got to listen to you? See, they think it's man. It's not man. It's the anointing on man. You're in subjection to the anointing, not the person. The person, I've been around some guys that got stuff. They got, they're, 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 you don't know any of them, but some of them I've been around, they have an anointing on their life, but their character will wear you out because they're rough. And I'm like, I almost got edgy with it, like, man, rough, man, you're a little rough. You know what I mean? Like, I'm getting roughed up. And I was like, man, and just when I was going to open my mouth, God's like, you better shut up. You better shut up because you ain't the guy. This is the, this is the test. Man, I could help you here if you listen. <laughs> this is heavyweight stuff. Hit a homer. Ready? The relationship is a gift. Anybody could follow the deity, but it's the tough parts following the humanity. Because the humanity is where you see the flaws. But I got news for you. The flaws are on design to see if you can still follow the supernatural deity on the person. Most, watch this, most moronic people, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I don't know what other word I got. Give me a better word than moron. I don't know. Help me. Most people that do not spiritually understand, that would be better. Apologize. A spiritually understanding person will understand this, that that is the test. Because once I see humanity in you, it makes me kind of go like this. Oh, you're like me. And then I devalue who you are so I have a freedom to do whatever I want to do. See, they think they're slick. Rebellious people, you want to know why they like pointing out the flaws of others? So they can keep all their little flaws. Mm -hmm. They love to see people fail because if you fail, I could stay in my craziness. But see, this is the problem. Once you touch righteousness, you got nowhere to go, baby. Because this thing makes you turn. You know that? You know what's crazy? I hold the spiritual standard in here that will force you to grow or you'll leave. Oh, yeah, man, because I do it without even knowing. I carry it in my character. I ain't bragging on me. I'm just telling you what I'll do. I roll with it. It's weight, and you can't get around weight and not get changed. And then they get mad, and then you get mad about why your spiritual life's all screwed up. Don't get mad at your spiritual life. Keep pressing in. Don't get soft. Yeah, keep showing up, man, even when you don't feel like showing up. Why? I'll drag you to the finish line. Throw you on my back and carry you there. I'm being serious, man. Guys don't talk like this. God's honest truth, though. I'm going to tell you right here now. It's the truth. So, well, I want to go where I'm comfortable. That's because you can hide where you're comfortable. You know what I mean by that? You come to church and sit in the back and hide. 
Oh, I feel good. This music's great. I'm going to preach something's going to get on you. Go home with you. The ministry of aggravation will aggravate you till you transform or you'll just get mad. Yeah, I mean, you make me mad. Yeah, say, yeah, mad. I'm mad. I don't, why are you mad? I don't know. I'm just mad. What you mad at? I'm mad at him. Why are you mad at him? I'm mad. I don't know why. Get over being mad and get glad. And come on, let's do this thing. Otherwise, you're going to turn out sad. Come on, hallelujah. Come on. You see what I'm saying? But this is what happens. This is what happens. You get under this thing, man, and you get empowered. I'm telling you lots of you're going to love this. Watch. I got more for you, right? Where do you reign in the ring? Where do you reign as a king? Right here and now. Write that down. You reign now. It might be a heaven to have no big old. Man, the devil's going to be scared of you. Remember when Jesus got the disciples? He said, hey, you guys go out and in my name. In your name what? Cast out them devils. Hear the sick, raise the dead and go. They come back. They said, Jesus, what? At your name. At your name, devils were coming out. He said, man, don't get all excited about devils coming out of people. That ain't no big deal. He said, wait till you start seeing them get saved. Hallelujah. That'll happen. See what I'm saying? Are you seeing this? They said, at the name. We got the name. They had the name. They went out to use the name. The name work. Why is that? He gave it to them. He gave it to the 70. He said, go in my name. Hello? What's that mean? He gave him his what? He gave him his authority. Where was the authority? In the name. You got the name. Once you got the name, you got the authority. You seeing this? You got the name of Jesus. Now, here's what people say. Now, I'm going to tell you why some people it ain't working. I believe this. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. You want to know why it ain't working for some people? Well, the name of Jesus will work all the time, every time. Yeah, it will. It will. But you don't have confidence in it until you get connected. I'm telling you, man, you better listen to me. Here's the thing. When you get connected where you need to get connected, and you got the power behind that name, not just in what you think, but you connected you know what I mean by that? What I'm saying is this. See, because here's the thing, man. God don't give real power until you get submitted because you're dangerous by yourself. You know what I'm saying, what I just said? Until you get you're dangerous by yourself because you, you, you're rogue. you rogue with it. Can't get rogue with it because you can go off the deep end with it. So God wants you to connect. Once you connect, God will give you even greater power. It's God's honest truth. Yeah, you get it all. Man, I got around Brother Norval. I'll tell Brother Ron. Brother Ron knows Brother Norval. I went to Cleveland, Tennessee. Right? What do I know? I don't know nothing. I got around there. We drove up there. I'm there. I'm preaching in the Bible school. Dr. Norval Hayes. I'm like, well, praise God. This guy knows what he's doing. He's talking about casting out devils and all this stuff. It was crazy. I was like, oh, my God. So I go to preach for him. I'm like, all right. Brother Norval wants me to go preach. I go preach. I preach a seminar in the school. And I show up. I preach. Just doing my thing. I'm in the car driving home. God told me this. I told, I told God. I said, Brother Norval, I'll help you down there, whatever you need. And he said, okay. And, and the Lord told me this. He said, you steward the division. You guys are down there now doing it. And you steward the vision of the Miracle Center. I said, okay, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. We did it. You know, now Brother Norval went on to be with the Lord. And now we got. And the Lord spoke this to me on the ride home. He said, they know you in heaven. Now they'll know you in hell. I said, what are you saying to me? I'm sitting in a car praying in the Holy Ghost. We've got 12 hours for crying out loud. Cleveland's like, whatever, nine, ten hours, whatever. I'm in the car. i got the kids. They know you in heaven. They'll know you in hell. I don't know if that's me or what we ate for lunch or whatever, whatever. All right, they'll know you now. I came back to the church, and all of a sudden, I got in the church, and I'm praying and doing something, and somebody start, like, getting all out in left field, and I'm like, well, I don't know what's wrong with these people. And God's like, cast the devil out of them. I'm like, cast the devil out of what? What is going on here? What kind of thing is this? What did I tell you to do? I want to cast the devil out of them. What do you mean cast the devil out of them? Cast the devil out of them. They got help them. They got free. Everything was cool. And I say, what in the heaven's going on here? God's like, I told you something's going to shift in your ministry. Well, how'd that happen? He got a ministry delivered to that level. What do you think happened with Kenneth Hagin? What is going to happen anywhere you go? Oh, okay, bro, you said that. Spirit of the prophet is subject unto the prophet. Come in and connect, it comes on you. Now, wherever you are, what do you think is going to come on you? The Holy Ghost. To do what? To do whatever you need to do. We're a part in this thing. We're pieces, and we all come together. We make one body. But you're part of a body. See it? So you're going to rule and reign the king. But you say, I ain't, I ain't nobody. I'm not listening to nobody. Okay, keep going on your own self. You can stay out there all you want by yourself. Have fun. That's the truth. Once you get in, guess what? I got corporate power now. I got power I didn't have before. 
I'm, uh, I'm running underneath. If I, if I, if I, if I, if I, not in a weird way, decide to send, if I say, hey, here's the thing. I'm sending you, Jeff, I'm sending you in my place to go, go somewhere. He going in my authority. You know what I'd expect? If I sent him to India and I called him and said, I'm sending one of my guys to India, okay? I would expect them to get him like they get me, put him where they put me, feed him like they feed me, set the meetings up like they set my meetings up for me, and then give him the same and respect him the way they respect me. You don't think they would? You better believe they would. Why? Because they understand it. See what I'm saying? So what do you think is going to happen when you show up? You bigger than who you think you are. Come on, guys. But here's Brown. I don't want no but, but see, you gotta come under. See, Jesus said, if you if you submit yourself, I'll lift you up. See what I'm saying? Wait, wait, everybody stick for it. You can't, and don't be one of these hopping, church hopping things. That's crazy. In here, out of there, in there, in there. You know what that just shows me? You don't have spiritual discernment to understand where you belong. Oh, you didn't like that, but it's okay. You're going to grow. This is going to grow you up or, or make you do something. Yeah, because you know what it is? Usually what happens with that is this. You know what it is? Well, you know, I, I, I no, 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 you, no, 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 no. No, you're, you're a tree. you got to get in the dirt and stay in the dirt, and there's going to be season you ain't going to like. And pressure, this is a big one, people. Remember this. Movement doesn't mean growth. Movement probably just means you're getting a little wacky in a certain season. Pressure shows up too much, and i got to, movement does not mean. See, transition is not change. Transition needs to be cultivated. Otherwise, you keep going through the same season over and over again. Because people think move. Move don't do nothing besides put you right back where you were where the last time you moved. So you're going to stick it out. It's going to be good seasons, bad seasons, fun seasons, stinky seasons, miserable. We're going to cry. We're going to have joy. I know. But listen, guys, I understand it. I was, I'm with you. I know what you're going through. Well, where in the world do I put my life? Not only where do I put my life, where do I put my trust? Let me tell you right here now, where do I put my finances? You crazy? You think, you know, I know what you're bringing when you come. I'm bringing my finances. I'm bringing my family. I'm bringing, I'm going to tell you something about church. You bring those kids, and it's like you don't leave them in no kiosk over here. Just drop your kid off like this is Walmart at the kiosk and go, here's my kid. No, I know what this is about. This is about your life being in that thing. It should be, and it should be lifelong. It shouldn't be seasonal. Seasonal usually means you didn't get what you want. Seasonal usually means you didn't hear what you want to hear. Seasonal people usually get upset about something and blame it on God because of lack of spiritual development. This is going to make a great CD series. Praise me to God. It's, I'm right. If it's not lifelong, it's not relationship. It's acquaintance. And half of it's business. And it shouldn't be either one in the church because God ain't into business. He's in a relationship. And I understand people geographically. I understand. I know what you're looking for. Everybody's looking for wisdom. You search your life looking for wisdom. Listen to me, please. You search your life looking for wisdom, man. And until you find it, you won't really connect it. Until you find it, you, 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 you go like this with it. I understand. But I'm going to get you ruling around like a king. But the only way, see, I got to talk like this. Because this is the only way you get it. You got to get all in or you can't get it all out. The kingdom doesn't work without you all in. You get, you get, he told you you want 30%? Put 30% in. 30, 60, 100 full. He's not talking about wheat. He's talking about the word. 30% in, 30% out. 60% in, 60% out. I'm going all in. Unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it abides alone. Just go in and die. But you know what? Everybody wants to reign like a king, but can you die like one first? Everybody want to reign like one, but can you die like one first? So you got to die like one first. You got to empty yourself. No more me and all of him. Paul had it figured out, Galatians 2.20. Remember he said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You guys are doing it, man. I'm telling you, man, the quicker you can get in and do it, the faster your life's going to take off. I'm telling you, listen to me. And, and, you, ain't, and you want to know what's crazy? You're not even accountable you're not even accountable for some of the things you're going to get kind of stuck in because you're being faithful. You missed that. You better pay attention. Don't let them distract you. You're not going to be accountable for certain seasons you walk through, not well, listen to me, because of what you've been placed in. The accountability will fall somewhere else, but your faithfulness will carry you to the finish line. 
Does that make sense? That means I connect to you and you start going wacky. Guess what? Wacky's going to come on you. I'm still going to get the position of faithful. Come on! Did you catch that? All those years. I just got that. That's your word right there. That word. That all those years you served, God didn't forget one of them, even though leadership goes off the rail. That's for more than one, but that one I caught. When, I, when she said, yeah, she grabbed it, I knew what I was saying. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't get it. You understand that? Am I too gone or are you guys not with me? You're with me, right? Do you understand what I just said or no? Some of you don't understand what I said. You connect to the moment. Okay? I connected Jeff. Jeff goes off the rail. God told me help him, but he went wacky. God will deal with his wacky. I'm still going to get the faithful. That's why you don't stop being faithful. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense now? I connected there. He goes off the rail. He's gone. God says, you did what I told you to do. You stay. You got faithful reward. He I will deal with because he's not following. That's his deal when you connect. You see what I'm saying? So don't get worried. But you know what most people do? Oh, he's jacked up. So that means they could just go be jacked up. They like to see jacked up because jacked up means I don't have no more guardrails on my life. I could just do whatever I want to do. That's why the church loves looking at humanity of man and not the deity that God placed on man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can follow the deity, but you see what I'm saying? What do I mean by deity? The Holy Spirit, God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the deity, the spiritual gift. I can follow your gift, but I kind of follow your manhood? I don't know. But guess what? The man side's my test, not the deity. Woo! You catch that? What that means is this. Remember uh, Ham, Sham, and Japheth? Daddy naked in the tent. Take a selfie. That's what it was. Take a selfie, daddy naked, get it on video, watch it. They say, cover the joker, man. Don't talk about it. Ain't right. Cursed forever. Cursed forever. Still cursed to this day. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, I'm going to say something. You, you, you figure this one out. And this is not, I'm not going here. I'm not going here. You do whatever you want to do, but just sit, sit and meditate on this one. How come there's some things God, I, I'm going to say something. God might forgive you. But you might alter your destiny forever by your decisions you make. And don't tell me I got more proof that says that's true. So I don't know all this for, forgive and, ooh, you get right back. Now, I don't know. I think you forgive and God, God, God forgives you, but I don't know if you ever get back what you should have been doing. So you better get serious because your, your destiny might be altered because of your dumb decision or my dumb decision or doing something we don't need to be doing. Now, that's not you guys. Please, I don't want to sound rough. I'm not rough. I'm not trying to, I'm not blasting you, but I'm trying to tell you, you are making the wise choice by staying submitted unto the word of God. And some seasons it seems like, well, my, is this really paying off my level, of, my level of commitment to God? Yeah, it's paying off. Even though your friends don't look like they're as committed, guess what? They, they might be missing something. You're not. Stay as committed as you are. Should I really, my God, you know how much money I'm making? Should I really be giving to church that kind of money? Just stay faithful to, no, you're the preacher, you're supposed to, no, I'm not the preacher saying what I'm supposed to say. I'm the guy scared of God. I'm telling you, yeah, stay in doing what you're doing. Stay in doing, well, I'm serving, my God, I'm in the parking lot, I'm in the kids' ministry, I'm changing diapers, I'm changing diapers for 10 years. Does anybody even notice what I'm doing? Yeah, God notices what you're doing. God notices everything you're doing. God sees everything you're sowing. And even when it's not an easy season, God still sees your faithful season. Come on, you see this? You pulling this in? Everybody say, well, you know, you, you plugged in, but you know, you got a ministry of helps. Like that's some bad word in the church. I'm just telling you, look at, look at 1 Peter 2.13. We need it. Not just here, everywhere. You got an assignment. This is 1 Peter 2.13. You guys are doing great. I'm telling you, man, this ain't easy. It's true, though. But here's my thing. Is God, is God ruling the reign in your life or you are? You know, I do a little bit of it. How submitted to you to the Word of God are you? Look, be, look at this. I got it in a different translation, but it's okay. I got be submissive to every human institution and authority for the Lord's sake or the sake of the Lord, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors as sent by him to bring vengeance, punishment, and justice to those who do wrong and to encourage those who do good service. See that? Peter forcefully commands the Christian to submit voluntary to everything that they've been sent under. He does not make submission a matter of personal conviction or choice. You better get that right now. 
He did not make con- this thing make submission a matter of personal conviction or choice. He decrees that it is an obligation for all Christians to every ordinance of man. Did you get that? I'll show you, right? We had submission. How many know Keith Moore? I told you the story, but how many know Keith Moore, the brother, Pastor Keith Moore? You ever see Pastor Keith Moore? Got a church in Naples, got one over there in Branch, Missouri. Well, we, had, we were in Ramah going to Bible school, and I got Brother Keith, you know. Brother, he was Brother Keith back then. You know, he wasn't all cool on Brother Copeland yet, but God bless him, a great man of God. And Brother Keith's there, and we have submission and authority with Brother Keith Moore. Man, we're getting hammered. We are getting hammered, man. Brother Hagan walks in this room. You stand on your feet like the president walked in here. I was like, okay, yes, sir. I mean, he's rolling it. I said, what do you mean? He said, if the president of the United States walked in this room, would you stand to your feet? He said, this is the great, one of the greatest men of God ever walked the face of the earth. He walks in the room, stand up. I said, yes, sir. See, rebellious people don't like that kind of talk. But why we got to stand up? Because you're rebellious. Get up. You know what I mean? Brother Hagin come in the room. We started doing it. I didn't know. I didn't know I was supposed to. You know, I'm honorable, but I didn't know. So he started doing it. He told us. He said, he said, if this, that, and serving. I watched. I, I, I seen it. I don't know if I told you. I told all my boys. I said, this guy's going to go places. Kenneth Hagin? I said, no. I said, Keith Moore is going to go further than most of these guys ever walk foot in this place. They said, well, how do you know that? I said, this guy serves Brother Hagin better than anybody i ever seen in my life. Guys like Doug Jones, solid. But I'm just saying, they serve Brother Hagin, man, like, to the point where you're like, this guy's all in. So we had this, right? This is a great one. We got spiritual authority class. So we do it, right? And it's test day. I told you this story, but just pretend you don't know it. It's test day, right? I go in there and we take a test, and here's this. You get a little scantron, you get a little thing, you know, like you feel like you're five years old. Scan, you got number two pencil? Yeah. You know, and these tests, you know, this place is not the Harvard of spirituality. So these tests take you like 15 minutes, you're done. The last class of the day, I'm going to whip out the test sheet. I'm going to go 15 minutes. I'm leaving. So, you know, we get in there. and going to have my day going. And I've done this before. Done it every class I've had up until now. I take the test. I bring my test up. I walk out and hit the door. They ain't got no attendance after that. You, you tend in and you tend out. Go. Okay. Room full of people. There's got to be. That's the big one. So there's probably about a, oh, close to maybe, I don't know, maybe not a 1,000. But, you know, you'd probably say a couple hundred people at least. I'd say a good 400 people. Okay, big class there with all your buddies from Bishop Bishop Butler's, and I'm in there, and we all know better. And we're doing the test, so I bring everybody. Bring. Now a couple of people finish faster than others, you know. Speedies so like bring it up there, and as the, soon as they're there, now no, they, they don't give the test. You know, they don't they don't give the teachers don't give the test. They got secretaries and stuff, ladies, ladies that come. You know, it's just a test day. You hand it out, go. These guys are busy. So one of the first guys come up and said, "Please, sir, when you're finished with the test, go back to your seat." Okay. So then all of a sudden, people start coming up. Please, when you're done with the test. Now they got to make a big PA announcement because you got, you know, one, two, three. Now it's moving now. we got 15, 20 people. When you're, please, um, when, you're please, when you're done, when you finish your test, when you're finished with the exam, please hand your exam in. And then when you're finished, please go back to your seat. Okay. So I'm thinking, well, this is going to last 15, 20 minutes. They're probably just doing something, you know, Brother Moore or whatever wants. But... Uh, Oh, first 14, 15 people. Go, All right, make a long story short. Half hour goes by. I'm like, man, she's serious about this. And now you can start hearing the grumbling, the rumbling, the moaning, mad. People, I'm mad. I'm leaving. People leave Bible school. People left. I got appointments. People all half cussing, right? Bing, first bell goes off. You know, now you're really in. It's like an hour class, you know. First, bing, one bell, and then the second bell, you go. That's like get set up to go. Rah, rah, you can hear it. Oh, it's like festering, rumbling through the whole thing, man. Rah, 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 she's crazy. Rah, rah. Ladies getting hammered from every direction. Bing, bells up, people getting up out of the of my Believing. Everybody, big, man, I'm mad. I'm like, what's she keep us? She's a jerk. Why'd she leave us here all day? You know what I mean? Praise be to God, I'm all good, right? Everybody's cool. We've go we got the weekend. Friday, you know, going, go to work, get done. Monday morning, I show up. We got Gospel of John. Guess who's teaching? Brother Moore, he got a grin on his face. He come in the pulpit, got in the pulpit. Hey, guys, how you doing? Got the same. Now, some of these classes, because it's one year, two year, you go with the same group, the big ones, and then you break out the second year and all your stuff. So we all go into school. We're on the same class together. We got it for this. He goes, I just want to let you know we're in Gospel of John. You guys get your notebooks. And I said, by, he goes, by the way, he said, um, um, last, last class when we did that, uh, I told her to keep you in that room. 
If you grumbled, mumbled, complained, murmured, and bickered, did anything, or got up, did anything, you failed spiritual authority. I could care less what you got on that test. So y'all want to just corporately repent right now and we can get this over with? Or you want to go on with yourself? Man, we stood up. I was maybe the first one. I was like, I'm sorry, God. I failed that class. I want to got an A on the paper, but I failed in my heart. See what I'm saying? I'll stand up, but I'm sitting down on the inside. No, man, this stuff's for your spiritual life. You see what I'm saying? Man, he got us all. Everybody complained. You know what I'm saying? When you complain, you know, you ready to go? Why don't you do it? He's like, look, here's the thing. I can handle authority when it comes from a level of where I think, but that secretary lady, she don't. No, 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 no. She's standing in the place of somebody. See, she ain't just some secretary lady. She's the boss right now. I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah, I want to do work out for you. My grade from God was F. I got straight A's, but my grade from God was F. So did you pass? No, I failed. Maybe I could do it again. I get better at it. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? I'm good at it, but no, you see what I mean? We learn. Everybody learns. This is what I'm saying. Authority. You come in this way. I ain't found, I ain't found no authority. Well, you keep your, I'm telling you now. Look, let me tell you something. You want to you wanna make it, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me show you something now. You ain't going to like this. I'm going to step on some toes. Any authority you come into, come into a, a, a level of or an arena with or conference, if you posture right, you'll get out right. Yeah, you will. You go looking for a fight, you'll find one. I'm telling you, man, posture right. Posture yourself right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got, so even like on the phone with these people, you know, they well, just chill. You come aggressive, they get aggressive. Anything you do in life, you got to posture. Posture is not a, it's, it's a word we don't really use. I told, I won't even tell you guys because you're using it on me. You know, if you're ever going to get in my office. But I said, I can get out of anything. I can get out of anything. What you mean you get out of anything? I'll make sure you can't. I'll make sure whoever I'm in, in the presence of will not allow me to leave their life. I know how not to exit because it's all about posture. Because if you posture right, people can't get rid of you. But if you posture wrong, people can't keep you. What are you going to do with this one? I don't know. We'll find out when we get in there. Posture wrong, I can't keep you. Posture right, I can't get rid of you. You'll get it. It'll sink in. Posture right, and I can't get rid of you because you'll pull on my heart, and you'll, and you'll pull the strings that even God, can I have mercy? Huh? Who ain't going to give nobody mercy? Can I, can, can I? Can I have mercy? Can I have grace? I'm going to call upon mercy and grace and not, you going to be the one to wield that? No, come on. See what I'm saying? Posture. I didn't do nothing. It wasn't me. It was Ron. You know what I'm saying? You've been there. You've been there. Let me tell you. What? Well, just jacked up work. Work? Bro, they don't want to hear that. I'm just helping you. It's all authority. Watch this. Ready? It's a kingdom thing. Look at Psalm 103, 19. You doing good? You like this? You know? And I know, look, hey, some of you, man, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I know you work in the demon-possessed office. I'm telling you right now. I know it's true. I know it's true. Or you got people that are crazy around you and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Look at Psalm 108. For the Lord hath prepared what? Look at this. The Lord hath what? Prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. You see that? I, got, I think I got amplified. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. You can hear this meaning what? Kingdom rule. What do you mean kingdom is rule? It doesn't mean, look, it doesn't mean that his rule is just in the heavens. God's rules over everything. So when you tap into his rule, you tap into his way of doing this. We have the authority to rule and reign in kings and have dominion in our life. And basically right here and now we have that. Okay? Well, I don't, you know, I, I know what some people are going to say. Well, I don't see it. Yeah, I know. You don't see it. One reason is, well, the biggest thing is this. We're, we don't understand it. We don't know we've been given it. We don't know we have in jurisdiction to it. And I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going to activate it or enforce it until you submit yourself to it. So let me ask you a question. Now, look, watch this. This is what I've said all this for. How much, how much rule and reign you going to have in a kingdom you have not submitted yourself unto? You 
You better sit, meditate, and marinate. How much rule and reign you going to have in a kingdom that you have not first submitted your life unto the principles of that kingdom? Quiet in this church tonight now. Come on, I love you. Smile on your brother. Let us love one another right now. See it? I'm a Bible, Bible toter. How much that Bible are you toting in your heart? <laughs> I'm halfway. I'm cool with it. I'm going to sip and tip and smoke a little bit and, you know, do a little bit. No, 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 no. Hey, go so. This, God, he's a set-up artist, man. Let me tell you what. God is a master set-you-up artist. He is. Watch it. You want to see how I do it? He's going to get you to get out of sin because he knows it ruins your consciousness of the kingdom and God. So here's the thing. How bad you want your stuff because it's costing you the stuff in the kingdom. And he gives you that middle road. See, religion tried to force it, freeze it, fear it, reject it out of you. Jesus said, look how good it is in the kingdom. Look how good it is. You want to have power over all death? Man, the de look, bro, if the devil's tempting you over here and you're yielding to it, how are you going to cast him out over there? You see what I'm saying? So you get in there and go, no, 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 I don't need none of that stuff. And I got power to throw. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look, this, how submitted are you to the kingdom? And you're per I'm going I'm to cuss them out if they, no, nah, nah, how submitted are you in the kingdom? How submitted? And then some people say this, 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 this. It's a setup. The devil said, well, you're, you know, you're a punk, man. You man up. Look, I'm just helping you, helping you figure it out. You're a punk. Cause you ain't, you know, no. So you, punk, you punk, you be acting like a punk. You know, you know what I mean by that? Like you being, you're being soft or you're not. Rise up. Take your place. Put your dukes up. No, 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 no. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Don't, I'm not coming up under that because once I stay out of that, I'm losing power. See, submitting doesn't lose power. Submitting gains all the power. And now I don't do it like the earth does it. I do it like the kingdom does it. Now, I'm not saying to go, you know, somebody knock you in the head. You got to defend yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But here's what I'm saying. Right away to go fight. No, hey, we don't have to be here. You know what's funny? Guys that, I'm going to give you a secret. Guys that really know how to fight and can hurt you, they don't look for a fight. And that guy came here, he's dangerous. The guy's like one of the top guys in the world. He trains people on how to do stuff. I came out of that class learning one thing. A guy that's screaming and yelling, he probably can't fight. The guy that's quiet, go the other way. That dude kill you. This guy was like, he knew all this stuff. Like, he's like, why? Ah, like, get you. Dennis was with me. This guy was bad. Am I kidding? I'm not kidding. Like sixth in the world or something, teaching people how to do this stuff. He said, this was, when he said this, I knew something was wrong with him. He said, if you see three people walking down the street and they're loud and obnoxious, maybe a little drunk, he said, cross the street and go the other way. I said, bro, if I knew what you knew, I'd be running in the middle. And yet, see it? You seen it? He said, no. He said, cross the street and avoid it. To avoid every opportunity you can. And the only way you fight is if you're forced to. Don't go looking for it. Only if it comes to you. Kingdom mentality. Don't go looking to get weird. But if this kingdom stuff gets called on you, move in it. You see it? Somebody that's learned in something doesn't go looking for it. But if it shows up, they know how to handle it. That's what you're doing, man. Someone like, hey, it's a drive to. Beep. They tell you you're number one. Go pray, praise the Lord. So no problem. Let me buy you some coffee today. I ain't coming out. I ain't coming out, man. Don't you? Because the devil wants you out. He wants you out. Get in the flesh. Rob your blessing. Start grumbling, complaining, talk. Uh, will you buy? Why are you telling me I'm number one? No, don't come out. Don't come out of the kingdom. Stay in that thing. I'm ruling and reigning in the kingdom. I'm ruling and reigning in that thing. I'm staying submitted unto it. Walk in love. When love can't go no further than that, then you got to do whatever you got to do. I understand it, but here's my deal. You understand what I'm saying? Stay in it. Don't come out. I want to say something. Don't say it. I want to do something. Don't do it. I want to tell them, hey, don't, you, don't you do it. You got to enforce the kingdom. Does that make sense? For how, how submitted are you to the king? Okay, let me ask you. How much power are you going to have in the company if you ain't following the company policies? That's the kingdom right there. See what I'm saying? Well, how, how in are you? I ain't paying attention to that. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to that. So get in. And you starts in your heart. I submit myself into the word. See it? I'm all in the word. And then I'm all in the order of it. Man, once you get there, you're cooking. You, are, is it clicking? I was like, God said. God said, then that's it. 
Can I show you one? Can I show Because nobody likes the suffering part. You're going to suffer. You're going to, let me tell you something, church. You're going to suffer. You know what you're going to suffer from? Getting your own way. That's what you're going to suffer from. You don't get, this ain't Burger King or whatever them joints are. Have it your way? Is that Burger King? Yeah, you ain't doing none of that. You ain't having nothing your way in the kingdom. You're going to have it his way. Ain't your way, it's Yahweh. Woo, come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you it's true, right? But here's the thing. I ain't staying here forever. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. You ain't staying in this earth forever. Man, you, who you want to who you you please? You want to please man or you want to please God? See what I'm saying? I want to please God. I'm down here making people mad. Who cares? I'm pleasing the Lord. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to make you mad in general. You know what I'm saying? You're like, well, praise God. I'm, I'm a Christian and I love the Lord. And, you know, you start talking to yourself. Be like, oh, here he comes. Well, I don't care if I'm making you happy. I didn't come here to make you happy. I come here to please the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Some of you get labeled, you know, the, the Bible toter or one of them, you know, you all day, you see all about the Bible. You know what I mean? I went somewhere the other day and they, they called a the guy, one guy, they called him the preacher. Not me, the guy. I was like, good, they should call you the preacher, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, devil caster, outer. Come on, somebody. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, they know your witness. They know what you stand for. They know what you believe. They understand that if they're going to have one of those shady meetings, they ain't going to invite you in because you ain't going to be down with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been to this rodeo before. They want, you to, they want you to come in, but they don't want to ask you certain questions because they know where you stand. Well, please the Lord. I'm all in the kingdom. Pastor Chris, what does that mean? Look, you want, can I give you this one? Now, let me tell you something about this suffering thing. Now, I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get wild. Go to 2 Timothy 2.12. I got two more scriptures for you, right? You okay? Is this making sense? You got it? See what I'm saying? Go all in. Well, you know, I'm kind of going to go halfway in, but I want to have my own life. You don't deserve your own life. How many of you want your own life? Go hang on a cross. Pay the price for it then. I don't even want to have a life. Why do you want to have a life for? I'm way more funny than you're laughing tonight because I'm right. I'm going to have my own life. Good. Get up on the cross. Pay for that joker. How many of you want the, what he did on the cross? I do. <laughs> How many like, don't you wish we could all see hell just for a minute? Like, what is that? Gee, that's hell, bro. I'll do whatever you say. <laughs> Brother, Brother Hagin, you want to laugh? Oh, my God, in heaven. The hair on my neck stood up. I'm in Rhema, right? Brother Hagin goes, he started telling that story. I went to hell. You got to go watch that video. That'll scare the hell out of you in, 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 the, in the place. Like, you know what I mean? Not the curse word, but the, the actual, it'll scare you, bro. My hair on my neck stood up. I told you the story. He goes, I'm going down. He left his body. He died. He left his body, and he's telling the story. You ever have somebody tell a story that happened to them, and it feels so real to them while they're telling it? You feel the experience of it? My hair on my neck. I had hair back then. It stood up on the back of my neck. I was like, oh, my God, man. I'm making sure I'm saved before I leave this room. Yeah, he died. He had an incurable heart disease, and his, his heart stopped beating. And they told him, they all came and said, well, listen, death's going to grip you. You can't live. There ain't no way you're going to make it. So when you go, the preacher came and told him, when you're ready to go, just kick back and let her go. You know what I mean? And he went in there. His mama was there, and it's a real good help he was, right? Kicked back and just let her go. So he did his thing. You know, Brother Hagin got in there. I'm telling stories tonight. I like these stories, right? And Brother Hagin says, I'm sitting here, and he goes, I could feel myself come out of my body. And I came out of my body, and all of a sudden, I started going down, down, down. You ever hear this? You guys had to hear this story. Some of you heard it. Who heard it? Raise your hand. You heard it, right? He starts going, and I'm going down. Down, you heard it from me. You need to go watch the video when he does it. I'm going down, down, down. I'm going down this dark hole, and I can feel creature things grabbing at me. And he goes, I'm a member of the First Baptist Church. I'm a member of the First Baptist Church. And it's, I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going down. And he shot back up into his body. His heart will start beating. And he was freaking out. He's like, I'm dying. He come back in his body. He said, I knew what it felt like. He said, and then he, he went back out. He goes, I'm going down again, and I'm going down, and I'm down. And he said, when he came back in the one time, he called out upon the name of Jesus. He wasn't saved, and he got saved. He's telling him he's a member of the Baptist church dying and going to hell. Oh, my God in heaven. And he said, he said not that Baptist people are going to hell easy now, but, you know, he wasn't saved. 
He just had religion, and he got, and he, he come, man, that hair on my head was, thin. I was like, God, I repent. I was like, help me, Jesus. I was like, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I was ready to pull out a Hail Mary, bro. I didn't know what it, I didn't, listen, man, that's joking, but you know what I'm saying. Come on. This guy's talking about going to hell. I, mean, get a, I want to have my own life. I don't want to have nothing, man. After you hear that story, I just want, man, Jesus, whatever you, did Jesus say, I'll be calling, I'll be like, I'll be Googling it. Is this right? I think I want to go do this. Is this right in the Bible? No. I ain't going. I don't know. Pastor Chris ain't around. Let me find out. Google it. Is it right to be doing this in the Bible? No. Google said no. I'm out. So you don't have the know-how. Your own heart will tell you. Should I be doing this? Should I be smoking a little dope on the weekend? No. There you go, bro. Tell me, that was funny. You don't laugh. You, you're tired tonight. Go home and go take a nap, right? You know what I'm saying? Now, it's, maybe some of you smoking dope. You should stop it because you ain't that smart as you are now. You ain't, you ain't got that many brain cells to be burning up, bro. Come on, right? So, was that funny? No, that's the truth. Uh, you know, should I do it? Google said no. Don't go. You understand what I'm saying here? I know I'm funny right now, but is, is the light coming on? How much power you want? Yeah, I want the power. You got to get under this. He emptied himself. Here's the part, man. You can't argue with him. He was God, came to the earth, laid it all down. That's what I told you in that Colossians scripture. He gave everything up so you can have it. But the only way you get it is you got to give everything up. I don't even want to. You know what? I, I wrote something. Recapturing uncaptured thoughts. He says, bring everything into captivity. We got to recapture uncaptured thoughts. Sunday's going to be powerful. Because he's going to say, I got reason in my head. You better get rid of reason. There should be no value. Your life is autopilot. You don't even have to make decisions. They're already made for you. Cheers. Uh, let me give you these two scriptures. You get it? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Woo! See it? If we deny him, he will also deny us. I don't want to suffer. Nobody wants to suffer. But why are you suffering? First Peter 5, 6. We're going to read 6. You can play. 6 through 10. This is good, man. You're going to love this. First Peter 5, 6 through 10. You guys are doing this. I'm proud of you, man. I'm telling you. But you come out of this, I'm just a word person. You know? I'm, a word, I'm just going to be a word person. Once you become a word person, life takes over. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, then he exalt you in due time. So once you humble, you get exalted. Humble means what? Get rid of your own opinion, your ideas, suggestions, get rid of all of it. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the... No, now watch this. Knowing that the same afflictions are happening in your brethren that are in the world. So everybody's going through the same stuff. So don't think you're not going through what everybody else isn't going through. Everybody's going through the same thing. Just ain't anybody talking about it. Okay? So everybody's going through the same mental projection in here. Everybody's going through. Maybe you got a little different challenge, but everybody's going through something. Now watch verse 10. Now verse 10 will change your life if you get it. But the God of all grace who has called you unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you suffer a while. Make you establish, strengthen, and settle. Now, suffer means, this is how I want you to see suffering. Now, this, look at me and I'm done. Write this down. I want you to suffer only on the behalf of him. That's the best way I ever heard suffering. I want you to suffer. I want you to suffer. Only on behalf of him. You see it? I want you to suffer. I don't want you to get what you want. Because if you get what you want, you're not going to like what you get. I want you to suffer. You understand this? Now, I'm not talking about... So, so, you wonder, put the balance on this. Don't, I can't sit here and give you the night... Oh, somebody that stops loving you. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. I want you to suffer from getting the way you want it and get what he wants 
Suffer it. What, what do I mean by it? You see it. On the behalf of him. I want to punch somebody in the face, but I'm going to suffer and hold back on the behalf of him. That's what I want you to do. I'm not saying me. I want to get angry and cuss somebody out, but you're going to suffer on behalf of him. You're going to keep your mouth closed. I want to say something to somebody, but I'm going to suffer on behalf of him because I know this isn't going to be pleasing him. I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm going to be kind to your wife or your husband because I like to say what I want to say, but I'm not going to say what I want to say or what I like to say. I'm going to be kind because I know it's what he would want me to do. I'm going to suffer on behalf of him. I'm not going to say what I feel like saying about the government because I'd really like to say something about it, but I'm not going to say it because I'm going to suffer on behalf of him. I'm going to line myself up with this word. I'm not going to say or do what I want to do. I'm going to suffer on behalf of him. That's the stuff. I'm go- I'm, you shouldn't be doing that, and I know I shouldn't be doing it. I'm going to stop doing it because I'm going to suffer on behalf of him. I'm going to lay it down on behalf of him. I'm not going to do what I want to do. That's the suffering I want you to do. Once you start surrendering that stuff, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. And he's going to establish you. And you're going to be perfect wanting nothing on the other side. I promise you that. Stand up on your feet. I'm telling you, it works. You ain't giving nothing up anyway. You're getting everything. Oh, you're getting everything. You're getting everything. Just lift your hands to heaven. Just say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for taking me to another level of authority and my submission unto it. Now, I think there's some people in here tonight. Now, I'm being serious. I think there's some people in here tonight. I really, really feel this. You're ready to take another step. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go a little bit more in, man. I'm cool with this. Jesus, I'm down. You know, we ain't nothing good to get. This ain't going to get weird. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be good for me. I'm going to take one more step. I'm going to solve. I'm, I'm, you know what? Get, I'm going to have some lonely. Don't worry about the lonely. Don't worry about none of that. He'll make up the difference. Excuse me. I want you to go all in. Some of you are ready to go to another level of submission. See, the, the level of submission you go to, the more authority you get. Is that all right? I've been even noticing, like, areas in my heart, the more you get in. Uh, can I tell you something? Look at me. Can I tell you something? Can I just, can I give you the speed it up process? Can I just tell you this? If you catch what I'm saying here, it's going to mess you up. I don't care about nothing. Something just hit me the other week. I think it was last week. I, was, I got so far in, I was like, I don't care about nothing. Hear me. Because you get so far in, you're like, I'm so under what he's under. What's going to move me? You just get under. You're like, he got it. I'm trust. When you get it, you know what I'm saying? It's like almost like you see that word and you get under it. And that word is above you. What you worried about? You got nothing to worry about. He'll work everything out. You see what I'm saying? And you just got a freedom in your life because I don't even got to make a decision. He's already made them. I just got to find out what he said. Does it make sense? Seen it? No, I was kidding with one of the guys. He's up, you know, he, he does, a, he, does a, he flies, you know. He might be watching, so I don't want to say. But he flies, you know, he flies, flies, flies. He's good, too. And I was saying, I said, listen, I said, this is how you got to know. This is how you got to know something. I said, if I need to get somewhere that I need to get to, or if Jeff said, hey, I got to get somewhere, I said, or if, you know, Jeff says, hey, I got to get here to there, and I got to get there, and there's no other way to get there. I said, no, I know a guy that can get us there. I know a guy that can get us there. We ain't got to understand how. He'll get us there. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing I was telling you in the beginning. I don't have to know what to do. I just got to know somebody who knows what to do. He knows what to do. You ain't got to figure out life. Just go, what does he say about this? Love your wife like Jesus loved the church. Okay, that's done. Just love her. Don't love her the way you want to love her because human love ain't right. Honor. How do I honor my father and my mother? Figure it out. It's there. How do I do the right thing? How do I do what I'm supposed to do? It's right here. It tells you what to do. Just go find it. See it? I don't have to make a decision in the world. The book already made a decision for me. How I treat my kids. Tell me what to do. How do you treat anything? How do you treat a promise of God? Tell me what to do. Believe. Confess. Somebody, we were talking about finances, business guy today. I said, go give God praise. Psalm says, in the earth shall release its increase. Go praise the Lord. He told you what to do. It's in there. You see what I'm saying? Life's all the part. It becomes a great journey. But here's the thing. How submitted are you to it is going to be the determining factor how much authority you got in it. How submitted you are to it is going to determine the level of authority God gives you. 
That Roman centurion said, I'm a man, I'm under, I'm all in. You say it, it's good. Something's going to change in your hearing the minute you get all in. Something changes. Frequencies go to a new place. I'm, I'm, I don't want to keep you no longer. Come Sunday, we're going to talk more about it. Just lift your hands to heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Just pray this word. Seals with your heart. Take home what you got to take home. Let it transform you. Father, I just thank you for each and every person watching. I thank you for their faithfulness and their commitment. God, bless them. Keep them. And Father, I thank you for everybody in this building tonight. I thank you, Lord. Change and transformation is taking place and supernatural abilities going before them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said amen. Come on, put your hands together. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Don't forget, Sunday 9 and 1030. We'll see you at Relevant. God bless you guys. Be safe.